QuickBooks Online 2024 budget reports. Get ready because we're moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software. And we want to verify that we're not a robot, just in case there's any confusion about the matter. How many times do I have to tell you? Anyways, let's go to the reports, open up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side in the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet so that we can open link in a new tab. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, Actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Right click on the profit and loss so we can once again open the link in a new tab. Let's go into that middle tab, that balance sheet, close up the ham boogie and change that range, bringing it back to 2023, 01, 01, 23 tab, 12, 3, 1, 2, 3 tab, running it to refresh it and then we'll tab to the right close up the hamburger and we're going to make a new range 010123 tab 123123 tab and then we run it and it refreshes it just like drinking a glass of lemonade after a run the screen refreshes you okay that's the setup process that we do every time remembering that these are our major two financial statement reports that being the balance sheet the income statement otherwise known as the profit and loss all other reports for the most part giving us more information about these major two reports however this time we're going to get into kind of an exception and we've seen some exceptions before to the general rule of all other reports basically supporting or providing more detail about one or multiple line items on these major financial statements one being the bank reconciliation because the bank reconciliation is an internal control type of report and the other being the statement of cash flows which is really another major financial statement which is kind of reworking in essence primarily our profit and loss but not on an accrual basis but a cashed basis this time we want to take a look at budgetary reports budgetary reports are often confusing because they they blur the line between the accountant's obligation the bookkeeper's obligation and the obligation of management so in other words if we look at the budgets they have the format of financial statements and therefore you would expect then the accountant to be involved in the creation of the budgets. However, when you think about accounting in general, what we're trying to do in the accounting department is take past data or transactions that are currently happening in real time and record them, document them in our financial statements, compile them in such a way that we can have useful information that we can use to make decisions with. Those decisions, of course, being projections now that we're going to think about what we're going to do at this point in time to try to change the future, to, to increase our productivity, to increase sales, revenue generation. So note that the general concept of budgets then is not something that's directly in the purview of the bookkeeper, typically. It's what the bookkeeper might be in on with other people that are involved in the business so that we can try to make projections into the future from the accountant or bookkeeping side then our major goal is the formatting that's where we kind of play a role but we're going to need more information than just past data so that's just something to keep in mind so in other words if you're working in the accounting department of a business then you're going to possibly be involved in the budgeting but you're not going to be the only one involved because you're going to need other decision makers that are that are going to try to make changes to what they're currently doing to hopefully improve revenue generation in the future 
If you are a bookkeeper, you have a similar situation. The owner of the business might expect a budget or something like that from you. You can make a budget based on just prior year numbers. However, to make a really good budget that's going to going to have a good benchmark going forward, you would need the input of the owner of the business. If you are the owner of the business and you're doing your own bookkeeping, then of course you're doing everything, right? So now you you're putting your bookkeeping hat on to think about what kind of bookkeeping you would need to do to create the budget, what's the technical format of the budget, financial statement looking format, and you're thinking in terms of the management to think about what changes you might make. So quick quick note on some of the changes you might make, right? What are we gonna start the budget with? Most likely prior year numbers is gonna be our starting point, but then we're going to then think about what changes we're gonna make based on our performance in the past. Those things might be increasing advertising, for example. We might increase or decrease the cost of our products, for example. We might be looking into things that are outside of our control that we think will have an impact on our financial statements, such as the economy, such as politics and all that crazy stuff uh, going on. We're gonna to try to put that into the picture to make projections into the future and we want to make projections because we want the goal to see if we can hit the goal. If we don't have our goals, we're kind of shooting in the dark. We're shooting from the hip. We might not be totally invested in what we're doing. Therefore, what we, when we think of the budget, we usually think of the profit and loss report format as the budget. You'll remember that the balance sheet is as of a point in time. That's where we stand as of a point in time. The budget... I mean, the profit and loss is basically going back a year in history. When you're looking at a standard budget, we're going back a year or a month to see how we got to where we are currently standing on the balance sheet in terms of revenue generation and expenses that we had to incur in order to generate that revenue. When we're projecting out into the future, we're looking generally then mostly at the performance document that being the profit and loss. This is what we are going to do. This is the game plan. This is the actions that will happen in the future represented in income and expenses. And then we could have a balance sheet budget as well. The balance sheet budget is where we're going to end up after the month or year. So, so that's the general idea of the budget. All right, let's go to the first tab. Now, note that if I go down to the reports on the left-hand side and you don't have any budgets already in here if i type in budget there's nothing in here right because we don't have any we haven't set any up so you would need to basically set up the budgets now note that the one easy way you can set up the budget just within quickbooks i'll, I'll tell you where they're located you can go into the drop down here and you can find the budgeting under the tools and currently they also have it on the left hand side where you have the budgeting on the left hand side so here's where we have it we've got their little uh, thing here it says plan better with budgets manage all your profit and loss and balance sheet budgets in one place the balance sheet by the way is a newer uh, function or a newer feature within quickbooks online a lot of competitors still don't really have a balance sheet because a lot of people the first step is to think of it in terms of the income statement so that's kind of neat that they have that so use uh, last data avail available in QuickBooks to make budgets. See if you're on track by comparing actual performance with budgeted numbers, bring in profit or loss uh, budget created elsewhere into QuickBooks. Now note that the general process, if we were to create the budget here, we're not usually gonna go through the creation process totally within QuickBooks. We could, we could just base the budget on the prior year numbers, for example, and just crank out a budget based on last year's numbers that we're gonna kind of somehow allocate across the future period. But if we really wanna an analyze the budget, we probably wanna do it externally somewhere in like Excel, for example. So what you might do with the budget, and we'll do this more in a future course in, or section when we talk about budgets in more detail, you might start off by taking the profit and loss, for example, export it to Excel, or possibly take the trial balance, which you can then adjust export it to Excel and then adjust it to just the profit and loss numbers so you don't have all the subtotals and then create your budget, meaning think about what changes are going to happen going into the future versus what you did last year. So one way that you might export this to Excel, for example, is you might start off by saying, I'm going to make this budget month by month for the last year. 
Here's last year's month by month budget. There's not much happening in the beginning of the year because this only had data in the end of it. But you can start by exporting this. And if you're in a, in a stable business, meaning your year to year is pretty stable, then that might be a good place to go, especially if you have seasonal business because some months might be higher than other months just because of the seasonalness of your business. On the other hand, if you're a growing business, it might be the case that your beginning months are no longer representative. You, have, you might have a lot more income towards the end of the year, not because you have a seasonal business, but because you did better at the end of the year. In that case, you might try to take the end numbers and project that as what you think are going to happen going forward, considering you think you're going to keep on and hold on to your gains <laughs> that you've had throughout the year, right? Or you might take the total uh, the total over the entire year and say, I'm just going to average it and make that an average divided by 12 for each month as your starting point. And then from there, you can then adjust it line by line to think about which lines are going to have an impact, possibly because you're going to increase advertising, for example, possibly because you're going to hire more people, possibly because you think your revenue is going to go up because of some other factor of the advertising, most likely, right? So you can start to think about those uh, types of changes that you might make in Excel. If you're going to do it in Excel, you might ask, well, why then? What's QuickBooks good for? Well, once you do it in Excel, you want to put it back into QuickBooks because QuickBooks is good at running reports. So if it's in QuickBooks, then you can then run budget versus actual reports. So as time passes, you have the target on a month by month basis. You have what you actually did on a month by month basis. And you can look at the difference between the two and see see what your shortfalls were. So if I was to create the budget, you can go in here. Notice that we have uh, the selector profile. You've got the profit and loss or income statement. And now you have the balance sheet, which is cool. We never, we didn't always used to have that before. And then the periods. So you can make multiple budgets here. but And so we can budget out into the future if we so choose. But we're going to be uh, looking at 2024. Typically, we're going to imagine 2023 has ended, then go into 2024 budget format, consolidated budget versus subdivided budget. So this one being if we hover over this, create an, an org level financial plan, meaning for the entire organization versus create individual budget based on location, class, department or customers. So this would be a more advanced setting if you want to dig into the details uh, of the budgets and try to break it out by location, class, or department. So if you have location tracking on, which is another feature, we have another course or section on if you want to look at that, or uh, class tracking, location tracking, department tracking, that's where you might use that type of uh, format. We have the custom budget, create a budget from scratch. That's what we'll look at here, but you could also import the budget. So you might try to think of a system where you can export the Excel adjust it and then see if you can just import it back in so you don't have to do the data input of importing it back in we'll take a look at those things more in a future course or section when we're focused more just on the budget but if i go into here then up top we've got the period and here's our period we've got the compare reference data so we're comparing the reference data to this drop down which currently says actual there is nothing in 2024 right now for the year to date actual so you might compare it to the prior year, 2023. So they've kind of, again, they've kind of updated uh, this one, which is kind of nice now so that we can see it uh, as compared to the prior year. So there it goes. I had to toggle this back on and off again to see it. So now you've got the prior year numbers. We only have data in the last couple months, but that might help us to do the data input. So if we just want to mirror what happened last year, I could just copy over the numbers from last year uh, over into the into the current year, or I can use that as my starting point and possibly make adjustments uh, from that point. We have then the yearly budget. If we want to do yearly, quarterly, oftentimes the standard budget is going to be the monthly budget. This number here hides the reference dates up top, so it might make it a little bit cleaner, but a little bit more less like confusing. If you hit the drop down in the cog, you've got the auto save is on. So if you want to turn that off, maybe if it's freezing up for whatever reason, but it seems to work pretty well. Hide empty rows. So that could be useful uh, if you want to hide uh, the rows that you're not using and you're doing a comparative type of thing. 
uh, but it's off by default so that we can see all the numbers on the chart of accounts here. So all the things on the chart of accounts are currently here. So now if I did the data input, like if I, if I put say uh, 10,000 in the total, then it'll divide out by month, which is kind of nice. We'll talk about some techniques to do the data input and so on in the future. Right now, I just wanna note that the general process would be you're probably going to export the profit and loss in uh, Excel to Excel and then do your budget outside of QuickBooks and then use that information to do the data input back in QuickBooks like this so that you can then generate reports in QuickBooks. So after you do this, if I'm going to right click on this tab up top and then I'm going to go into the reports on the left hand side, I'll close this out reports on the left and then when we search for the budget once we enter one we'll have the budget reports there'll be two major reports I, they won't let me save it in the test drive so we'll do a whole course or section on this later but once you then look this up you should have budget reports once you copy and save your budget reports there'll be two major reports generally the the normal budget and then the budget versus actual the budget versus actual is the report that's giving you something over and above what you would just do in Excel, because then as time passes, you can compare what you budgeted to happen to what has actually happened. Now, you, again, they've got both the profit and loss and income statement now. So if you're doing a simple budget, you're probably just looking at the income statement because you're trying to look at the performance and you're probably just thinking, what do I want to do? I want to maximize my revenues and I want to minimize my expenses as low as possible in order to maximize my revenues. And whatever happens to the balance sheet from a simple level, you'd say, I'm just going to let that fly, right? I'm going to do what I can do and, and try to just increase my revenue, my net income in essence, as much as I can from a year to, so that would be the, the most simple way to first think about the budget. However, when you pull the, when you get more advanced into the budgeting, then oftentimes the question is when you're trying to increase your web revenue, you have questions such as, do I need to invest more money to do that, right? Inve invest money in fixed assets like property, plant, and equipment might be part of your plan to generate more revenue uh, and inventory, right? These are common. And so, so, then, so then if you pull the balance sheet into it, then you got to think this is where I started at this point in time. And then you can get into more con and then the income statement will have an impact on the balance sheet because remember, it's kind of part of the equity section. So you can think about this is where we started on the balance sheet. And then the income statement is basically the performance statement that is going to happen. That's going to help us to get to where we're going to end at, which will be represented by the balance sheet at the end point. However, it's a little bit more complicated than that as well because there could be balance sheet type transactions that you're taking into consideration cash flow type transaction uh, that you're taking into consideration so when you really kind of dig down on the budgets you know you might have a a full list of budgets could be the balance sheet the income statement purchases budgets and uh, cash flow budgets and so on that you can that you can tie in all together so we'll talk about that a little bit more on uh the 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 course or section with the budgets if you want you can dive into a lot of depths on budgets in general different kinds of budgets how you might format your your projections out into the future to best be able to run different scenarios and so on we have other courses and sections just in terms of budgeting if you want to dive into that area noting that that area is a little bit different than simply bookkeeping it's going into kind of the land of finance, corporate finance type of stuff, ratio analysis and, and that kind of thing, which is intimately related to, to bookkeeping because all of that stuff basically is going to use the same techniques of, in essence, the financial statements. So I find if you go into those areas with an understanding of financial statements and debits and credits, which many people who are in that area don't understand, then you have a good, you know, that's, you, you have some advantages depending on what it is you're looking at. But in any case, that's the budgets.